Hi, welcome back to another booktube video. It's that time of the month again where I tell you all about my TBR for the upcoming month. Um, I've got some absolutely fantastic books on my list this month. Um, I have been sent a ton more advanced readers copies so I'm going to try and fit five of those in this month. I'll talk to you th uh, about those first and then I've got some physical books I want to get through because I did decide at the start of the year um, I've mentioned it before that I want to read a minimum of four physical books off these bookshelves and piles um, each month just to try and get them down a little bit although it's not quite working because I appear to be buying more than before every month so it's still getting bigger um, so anyway let's get into it so the first arc that I want to read this month is called The Wives by Taryn Fisher. Now I understand that this actually was released over in America a while back. So even though it's an arc for me, other people are already reading this in other parts of the world. Um, it's the UK that it hasn't yet been released into. Um, so uh, I've been sent that and basically the story is that it follows the main character and she is in a polygamous marriage with her husband. He has two other wives. She's never met them. She doesn't even know the names. And then she ends up finding out the name of one of them and going kind of accidentally meeting this lady to find out a bit more about her. And she sees this woman covered in bruises um, and she he's getting hints of a domestic abuse relationship but obviously this is somebody who's married to her husband so is it her husband who's beating up one of his other wives does that mean that her husband is that kind of person um so that's that's the mystery really and it does sound really really good from the reviews that I've already seen and from people who've read it over in America, it's coming out four or five stars. So I'm really, really excited to get to that one. I think I'll be reading that one first, actually. And then the next one is called Paradise Girl by Phil Featherstone. Um, this one is like a post-apocalyptic um, kind of dystopian setting. There's been a virus outbreak and it's wiped out everybody there's just this one lone survivor um, a young girl and she assumes that she is naturally gonna get this virus and die pretty soon so she starts recording in her diary what she thinks are going to be her last days alive um and she imagines that there's somebody reading this diary just to make it a bit more interesting when she's writing it and she calls this person adam but as the days progress and as she isn't succumbing to the virus, she becomes more obsessed with the idea of Adam um, and he becomes more and more real to her. And then she starts seeing signs that actually Adam might be real and she receives um, some kind of invite, inviting her to meet up somewhere with Adam. Uh, and then what happens then? Don't know. That's what we need to find out. Um, so that sounds quite good. I'm looking forward to that one as well. And the next book that I'll be reading is called The Silent House by Nell Pattison. Um, this is a thriller where uh, some a family is asleep at night and somebody breaks into the house and uh, the young girl is killed. Um, and the thing that makes this quite a unique thriller is that the family is deaf the whole family so it talks about um if somebody broke into your house and committed such a horrific act surely you would know about it well actually maybe not because if they are deaf then they wouldn't have been woken up by any noises that were made um and that adds like a really creepy factor to it for me the fact that somebody can be in the house of these people and doing whatever they want and the people wouldn't know about it until the next morning when they wake up. Um, and then the police obviously arrive and one of the police officers gets this feeling that something's being hidden, that the family themselves are keeping secrets. So then they have to try and investigate and figure out 
is this somebody that's broken in somebody random um it's a murderer um that they don't know or is the murderer closer to home so that sounds like quite a good thriller to get me through and then um the next book i think i got a little mistaken which one this is it's called a life redefined by tracy hewitt mayer um for some reason i had it in my head that this was mainly focused on mental health i'm not sure where i've got that from but when i've read the synopsis again i'm not quite sure um so it follows a teenage girl who's 17 called rowan and when she was 10 uh, apparently she did something that was quite innocent at the time but it resulted in her younger baby brother dying and since then the family have held her responsible she's felt unloved um and she's just felt pushed out basically and then you know she's 17 she goes away to college tries to get away from the family and she meets this bloke falls for him they're in a, a relationship she's happy but for some reason um members of her family keep trying to get back into her life to cause chaos to ruin things for her they don't want her to be happy um and then there's hints that actually the mother has been holding on to secrets all this time and that there's things that need to come out in the family um so i think there may be some mental health kind of aspects to it but I don't think it's exactly what I had in my head. I don't know where I've got the other thing from. So even though I'm not like desperately excited to read this one, I am interested just to see where it goes and what's made me think of the other thing. Um, and then the last arc that I'm going to be reading this month is called And the Stars Were Burning Brightly by Daniel... I can't pronounce this. Joando, possibly. Um, I think this is a YA. It follows um, a young boy whose older brother, who he absolutely loved, adored, revered, you know, his older brother kills himself. Um, and this young boy, along with his friend, decide to investigate on their own why, why would the brother who they love so much why would he just go and kill himself and they find out um, information about like online bullying um, violence possibly drugs um, and it just kind of talks about how the whole family will be shocked um, once the information and the secrets are discovered uh, so I think that's going to be one that's quite hard hitting Obviously, there's triggers there for suicide, bullying, mental health, things like that. But I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, and I'm wondering if it might actually be something that I would pass down to my eldest son. Um, if if it would be suitable for him as well. And then I'll move on to the books that I've chosen out of my own collection for this month. And considering there's only four books, I've managed to get in a good range of stuff. So we go from horror to YA, I'm not sure what you class that one as, I know it's YA, and then I've got one that's chiclet. So, the first one, I am doing the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge this year, and one of the prompts is to read a book set in Japan, and I was adamant that that was going to be quite a difficult one for me, because I just, I just had visions of all these, like, literary fiction or classics, and, and, me having to like drag myself through them um but when i saw this book i did not even need to read the synopsis i just ordered it off amazon straight away tokyo zombie yay i didn't need to know anything it was saying japan it's got zombies that's it job done um to the point where i didn't even know that it was a graphic novel <laughs> i thought it was just a normal book anyway so it came, um, and I am, I'm looking forward to reading it actually. Uh, I think sometimes I can put like so much pressure on myself with reading these massive, you know, proper novels. So this is going to be such a, an easy, quick read. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's a zombie outbreak in Tokyo. That's it. 
So, and the next one is, oh, would you even call Tokyo Zomba a horror? Maybe, I guess. So this is another horror, but this is, um, it's classed as a classic for the ho horror genre. Um, it's called The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. Now, I haven't heard anybody speak about this. I haven't seen it mentioned anywhere. I just happened to come across it in a charity bookshop and thought um, it looks quite thin and it sounds weird and gruesome and maybe I would love it. So I got it and it follows um, a young boy who is 16 years old and uh, he has killed three people including his brother and his cousin and then he says i haven't killed anybody for years and i don't intend to ever again it was just a stage i was going through we know that that's not going to be it um so I, I don't actually know what the book itself is about other than there's a boy who's a killer and apparently it gets really messed up and weird and gory and quite disappointed to find <laughs> that the writing is tiny there's me oh yeah it's quite a thin book that'll be easy nope the writing is tiny lovely i don't know i don't know whether i'm gonna i can't guess whether this is gonna be great or horrible but we'll give it a go and see what happens the next book that i'm going to read is called a long walk to water by linda sue park this is based on a true story. From what I can gather, it follows two different stories on two different timelines. Um, there's a boy who is forced to flee his village. Um, he's having to face not only the difficulties of being homeless, you know, the, there's um, a war going on, things like that, but also that there's wild animals out there that will attack humans. Um, and he is... Um, part of what they call the Lost Boys in that he is travelling um, around his country and the surrounding countries in search of his family because they were split up during fleeing the village. Um, I'm not sure which timeline that is on. Uh, I have a feeling that might be the one that's more current. And the other story we follow is a young girl and she is lives in quite a remote village she has to go and collect the water for her family every day and it takes her eight hours the trip to collect this water and she walks all that distance um and somehow these two stories despite one being set in 2008 and one in 1985 somehow they kind of intersect and it says that there's a hope in there somewhere so um I'll be honest, I bought this again because it's quite thin and I fancy some shorter things on my bookshelves. And yeah, it doesn't look too bad. So I think I'll get through that quite quickly. I'm interested to know how these two stories and two timelines intersect. So, And then the last book I've chosen off my bookshelves um, is the chiclet one and it's Why Mummy Doesn't Give a F by Jill Sims. Now this is actually the third book in the series. Um, I've got the other two, well I've got one just here, Why Mummy Drinks and the other one I'm convinced I own it but I can't see it. Um, and they basically just really really funny relatable story of a mum basically um she gets up to all sorts of antics but actually you can like i i literally was laughing out loud reading the other two the the really funny um you can imagine yourself already having done these things or thought these things or easily doing them in the future um if you've got children and um this one is further forward in the family's lives in that the t the children are now teenagers so she's having to deal with that previously we had when they were uh, a baby and a toddler so this just 
sounds so good i've been desperate to read this for a while and my husband bought me this for valentine's day so i'm chuffed about that and then the last two books that i'm going to put on my list of definite reads for this month are the tall and thunderhead by neil schusterman if you don't know what these are about then um I am rubbish at describing books, as you've noticed. So please go and read about them on Goodreads or Amazon. Um, it's the series of um, The Scythe. And I read that one last month. And I, I've been meaning to read it for a long time. And I don't know why at all. I've just never got around to reading it until last month. Because it is so good. Like, it's incredible. And... When I saw that it was like over 400 pages, this first book, I'm thinking, oh my God, it's going to take me forever. And actually, I think it was like two days. It is so good. I just could not put it down at all. Um, it follows, the first book in the series follows um, two teenagers and they live in a, a utopian society where illness has been eradicated. People basically live forever. Uh, but in order to um, control population levels, there are this group of people called scythes and their entire job is to choose people to kill. Um, and these two teenagers get chosen as apprentice scythes and it follows their journey, um, learning the job and meeting other sides and they how they do things and dealing with the corruption within the community um so I, I don't want to tell you anything about the next two that i'm planning to read this month because obviously it would um give spoilers for the first one if you've not read it but just trust me on this one they are fantastic and you need to go and read these um and that is everything. Obviously, as usual, I'm going to try and fit in some audio books or maybe something really short here and there, seeing as I've got a few short stories on, on my list this month. Um, but nothing definite um, set in stone yet. So I will see you all soon in my January wrap-up video. And if you like this, please give me a little thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you all soon. Bye.